Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 7, Episode 12, Time After Time. And this is the one where Dean goes back in time and helps out Elliot Ness. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. At first, I was kind of wondering if this was going to be some kind of jaunty sort of what-if kind of time travel episode. But admittedly, it starts off actually pretty good with that just flash of Dean hitting the guy and going back in time. And throughout this adventure, there is a little bit of kind of talking about Bobby and the loss that they've gone through. And there is this like very, very much a takeaway kind of remark about who the Leviathans are and everything from Kronos himself. I found that was just put in to make this episode relevant about what was going on. This episode kind of has a little bit of that feeling from the ones in season one. The, even it, it, it reveals itself basically in the recap that they didn't even mention anything that happened in the previous episode. Nothing about his coordinates. They just, they reveal stuff right up until Bobby dies again. I did like it to the most extent. I feel that this is a good kind of what if episode again, but it doesn't hold up as well as others like say the French mistake or uh, changing channels. Because the one thing that I do find a little bit odd is just how Elliot Ness is so accustomed to fighting monsters. They don't really kind of explain that at all. Sure, they say that, you know, there's these vampires that were killing people in Cleveland. He's not there about that with the, the loss and the depression and everything. He's like, lighten up, buddy. For the most part, they were kind of pointing out just how inaccurate the Untouchable movies is, which is quite quite is. There is actually a channel that points out a lot of the inaccuracies and some of the accuracies that the movie has, and it's called History Buffs. I would very much recommend them. They're very good. I do admit it does make the episode flow a little bit easier with Elliot Ness knowing what's going on and also having his assistant, who's essentially uh, an Angela Lansbury version of Bobby. I do feel that that bit is just so kind of easy for the story to progress. It's fun. I do like the little time travel bit as well with uh, Dean laying on the floor in that house and being able to look. And he's able to find a place that he knows that Sam will see in the future, which, mind you, though, I'm not a renovationist, but you would think that someone <laughs> would have, like, ah, but that Sam thing carved into the floor. It's a good little time travel bit. It reminded me of Frequency. And overall, the episode is just a fun little joint. I wouldn't say it's super stand out, aside from the fact that Dean goes back in time but it's a very well made one-off even if the ending where they do meet Kronos which by the way that is Lieberger Farm that's where they filmed a lot of episodes that you've seen already uh, that's even where they filmed the finale of season five but not that field behind it it just had that little addition at the end where it's like I, I know your future it's black and it's goo and I'm like eh, all right I don't know I did enjoyed this episode. I was into it. It didn't like peak me uh, to the point of like a very highly appraised episode, but it's a very good kind of, hey, what if Dean went back in time and hung out with Elliot Ness? But also something else I got to make a little comment about just before I do the review. Remember how there was this thing that I pointed out that Dean, if anyone else says something geeky or pop culture related, he's like, ugh, geeks, nerds. Yet he talks about anime as like a man of culture. As like, um, I find that these joke references are coming up more and more, and I'm just finding the hypocrisy of Dean harder and harder to digest. Anyways, that's just me. But in the end, I'm gonna give this episode a 5 out of 7. It's a good little romp, it's a fun little adventure, and I think it was probably a lot better than it could have been. But it gave me a little bit of a beep in the heartbeat of this season. It's been very, very difficult to get through this. I apologize, guys. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Let's see what you guys had to say. Time After Time is just a fun episode. It's what Sarah Gamble does best, making one of the uh, episodes of cool concepts and elevating them with great dialogue and story. The fact that Dean travels back in time to 1944 and teams up with Elliot Ness, who is a hunter, who just <laughs> is just so out there, is just so out there, and yet they take all full advantage, delivering us an exhilarating time. Jensen Ackles must have had so much fun playing Dean as happy and excited, which was a real welcome change of pace And when we've seen uh, since we've seen him in this season. Yeah, I guess that's true. I also really like the actor who played Elliot Ness, who was just so cool. Fun fact, Misha uh, played Elliot Ness in Eric Kripke's show Timeless. If you have one small gripe 
Monica if he had one small grip. I guess it's the villain Kronos. He didn't really stood out to me, but that's maybe because he played by Logan from Veronica Mars, and I'm a bit biased in my dislike toward that character in the show. Nonetheless, he didn't detach, uh, detract from what was an awesome episode. A side note, get ready for a long comment for episode 13. I have a lot to say. Okay, just as long as you don't make it a tome. No, no, no tomes, guys. Come on. But I am interested in what you have to say considering the build-up for this one. Uh, I really forgot about these hidden gems in season 7. I really enjoyed this version of Elliot Ness that he's a hunter and he works with Dean very well and I enjoyed Jason Doring as Kronos. Love him from the show Veronica Mars and Moonlight even though he's a monster. Oh my god I haven't heard anyone talk about Moonlight in forever. I do feel sorry for him because he's really in love with a woman. Glad to see Jody in the episode Helping Sam. Yeah, it's always fun to see Jody. Time After Time was one of those episodes I let play in the background. Don't get me wrong, it was okay. It was a decent time travel episode. Kronos was pretty cool. He reminds me of those pagan gods from the earlier seasons. He was new, not an angel or a demon, so win-win for me. Also, I don't get the emotional per se, but when Jody held up the bottle of uh, the bottle of wine or alcohol that Rufus left for Bobby, she really had to stop and think about Bobby and Rufus while looking at the single bottle. Dang, depressed. Also, I love how Dean tried to throw out all the one-liners from the movies and they never seem to catch. I do like the movie The Untouchables, but by God is that movie not accurate at all <laughs> what happened. Time After Time is one of the better time travel episodes and when Dean and Sam figures out that they're dealing with Kronos, the God of Time, really sold me on the episode as one of the greatest of the series. Really? Sure, Season 6 Frontierland and Season 8 as time goes by are stands out to the series. I really like Season 7 and it's considered bad season. It does have some hidden gems episodes within it as this episode. If you if you didn't know about this episode is that Mel Melissa Rockberg plays the younger version of Lily Taylor who appears in Season 9 Bloodlines. Oh, I thought she was recognizable and I have to say that we didn't get uh, I'm glad we didn't get Supernatural Bloodlines because Melissa's talents would have been wasted and we may have never gotten Manifest. I've heard Manifest is a good show too. Yeah, I I, I think it's a, a gem in this season for sure, but I definitely enjoy Frontierland a lot more because I feel like that was a much more of a better time travel episode. I remember loving the setup in the first half of the episode, but thought the solution conclusion didn't really convince me at all. It felt too contrived. But I guess how else were they going to get back, uh, get Dean back? Yeah, that's kind of my feeling a little bit as well. Time After Time is one of my favorite time travel episodes. They really went out of their way with making the town and the extras just in 1944. Normally, the two composers of the show divide the episodes evenly, but they composed it together in one. Also, making the historic uh, figure Elliot Ness a hunter on the side is a nice touch. Kronos is, on, is also, honestly, an overlooked pagan god in the show. I love the special effect with his death scene and the foreshadowing of Season 7's finale, where Sam tries to force himself to forget his former self in Season 8. Hence why Kronos says, enjoy Oblivion, directly to Sam. Fun fact, this is the first time we see Dean opposed from Season 6's where the Titanic unsank. Win rock, paper, scissors. Sam delivers the best di No, he didn't, though. He, he lost. Like, Dean loses. How does rock... How does rock beat paper? Or, oh, or is it implied... Oh, no, it's implied that he... Oh, I get you. Sam delivers one of the best dick jokes this, of the season's Dean in this episode. You're looking, are you looking at an enemy? Are you strictly in a dick now? Yes, that was actually a good one as well. And our next episode is... Number 13, The Slice Girls. If I'm correct, this is one of the ones that people are like, oh, you should watch out for this one. So give me guys' comments about this episode, and I'll read those in the next review. Until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.